Hey guys, it's Jimmy again from James's Hobby Zone. Today I'm doing my inbox review, my second inbox review of the 135th scale Tamiya German Hanamog half German half track. Now, this model kit I have already opened up. I have already uh, did an inbox review. I'm just I'm redoing it because I just didn't like how it came out. So let's uh, let's get to the model kit now. The box art is basic box art of what the of what the armored half track is. Uh, it comes with obviously you can see it. It, it comes with figures, uh, roughly about five figures, come with it, and uh, and it, it's pretty good. Uh, looks like a really good diorama uh, half track to do, especially in the African core, because um, that's what I'm thinking of doing is a diorama of African core anyway. So, opening up the box. Open it up there. Now, the kit, very nice. Comes with two directions. Now, putting all that off to the side, <clears throat> the, they have one set of directions that's in Japanese, and then they have another set of directions that we will, that I'll be using that are in English. Now, they give you obviously the five fake, you can see the five figures it comes with. All right, and then the kit looks the kit looks very simple to be put together. So we have uh, we have the, uh, the construction of water tank, the water tank that's installed in the vehicle. We also have the meter, uh, the panel, driver's panel, and then we have the interior. It's looking at it, the directions are very, very self-explanatory. Uh, they give you also little, you can see they actually give you uh, little bits of reference photos of how it would look, uh, how the Germans would be working on the half track, the suspension, how the suspension looks when they're jacked up. Actually, yeah, that's a jack. Well, and then side stuff, sides, and then these are these. I look at the photos. You can definitely tell that these are photos of actually a completed model. And then you go up on the other side, and then what you do is then you pick of what um, what half track you want to actually do. They have Russian front of 1942, or you have the African front of 1942. What I'm going to do is I'm going to end up doing the African core. Uh, I was very fond of uh, the African core very much because you know Erman Rommel was a very good uh, general tank tank commander. So, um, so looking at all the instructions here, looks like more uh, paint for applying decals and painting. Basically, here it just says around 1942, most of German military vehicles on the European front were painted German gray overall, and most of those on the African front were dark yellow. Some camouflage painting of either dark yellow and red brown or dark green and German gray. From 1943 and onward, the only dark yellow was accepted as the basic color and camouflage of painting of olive drab, red brown, and German gray was applied accordingly to the theater of war. Paint was brushed or sprayed on. Well, that was crazy. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to do something that I, I learned from Andy's Hobby Headquarters is I'm going to end up painting this completely black and then I'm going to end up painting it um, uh, I'm going to highlight it with some white so we can get some uh, spots and then I'll use the dark yellow now I might just instead of using the NATO black <coughs> <coughs> sorry guys I'm still sick but um, instead of using the NATO black like Andy uses I might actually use German gray to go over it and then do the white with the uh, with then the dark yellow because then after that I can actually uh, do uh, uh, wear and tear on it and weathering on it 
make it look like you know that as it was going through the desert you can see you'd end up seeing like the yellow the dark yellow paint chipping off and you'll see the gray that was what it was originally painted underneath so all right now that's uh that's the instructions all right well, let's see let's get these out of here now looking at the it's a typical bath bathtub hole that uh, I learned and uh, it, it's it's really nice obviously all of this would be getting covered up because you know it doesn't need to be exposed and then so uh, there's really no to me it did a really nice job there's no ejection pins on the outside that would be exposed Oh yeah, right there is on the inside. You can see the two injection pins, but that looks like it won't be exposed. So we're not gonna worry about that when we build this. The same thing with the top part of the hull. Uh, nothing on the outside, nothing on the inside showing. But on the inside, you could see a lot of the ejection pins. So, if this doesn't get covered up right here, we might have to kind of sand that down a little bit to make that all nice and smooth. And you can see it, it'll probably, it's going to look like it's going to be a nice tight fit as you kind of put the line all together. So, that's really nice. So, it looks like it's going to come together nice and nice and easy. Easy fits. Uh, looks like the mold that Tamiya did is from 1975 you can see that but I think this kit is a little bit newer uh looks like it's a little newer I mean can't really tell I don't know there's no really year markings on when anything was manufactured uh the only thing I could really do is I could see if there's a manufacturing date on the on the decals because the decals will end up telling me if um the decals will actually tell me when they were manufactured but i don't really know um looking at looking at the decals the, the they're very nice they're very thin too but looking at them there's really no date that would be on them so you know we'll have to you know just go and hope you know just say it's a 1975 well it's not we definitely know it's not a 1975 kit so but here's the first sprue um looks like we got a lot of the accessories here uh we have uh side skirts for the side of the hull that goes on that would go on the side over here to protect to cover up the tracks uh headlights those are headlights um front plate armor for the machine guns machine guns are very nicely detailed i really like that you can kind of see so ooh, machine guns where are they there they are yeah so they they look really good I, I like how they're nicely detailed uh the seats seats are really good uh toolboxes for the side front plate armor <laughs> Uh, seats, plate armor for the seats, regular tools that would be painted separately. And, you know, the, the, the first sprue is, you know, very, very well detailed. Uh, I have to figure this out. I don't know if these are, if these are part of the kit or if that's eject, ejector pin mark markings. I don't know. I have to look. I think, I don't think they... Uh, I don't think they belong because those are ejection pin markings right there but I don't I don't think these belong or these go to a or these hook up to the boxes they might go hook up to toolboxes so I won't really know until I start building the kit all right let's put that over there get the next sprue <coughs> the next sprue looks like it's got two on the inside um as I pull it out uh, looking at it we have uh, a lot of the interior uh, there's some seats Oops, let me get that out of here because you guys can't really see too well 
um, you know, interior parts. We have uh, that's the front panel steering wheel. Uh, this would be the the decking that the crew would sit in. Uh, all the suspension. Um, Suspension that looks like the water cooler. Yeah, it's a little more accessories and more suspension kit stuff. So uh, steering wheels. Yeah, we're gonna go with that. And then here's the here's the other one where <coughs> now we have the road wheels. The road wheels. We have the drive sprockets and that uh, and the rear and the front front wheels uh it would be nice if tamia had you know given us instead of these plastic wheels that they would end up giving us uh actual rubber wheels <coughs> that would that that would be that would be really nice to have but i mean i don't know i i i, I don't really know about this because it's my first this is my first armor piece uh i i'm really enjoy i really like how this kit is already displayed and how the pieces all go together with the with the sprues and everything i i'm really enjoying this so building this might be my might end up making me want to like start building more uh more armor so i mean right now this kit was at Hobby Lobby for twenty dollars, and I ended up getting it for twelve because, you know, I decided to use the forty percent off coupon. So I was like, oh, you know, what? and then I know that they got another one. They got a uh, a U.S. tank for I think the same price, and it's a I think it was a bulldog. So, but here's the here's the figures. Now the figures are. Uh, here's the figures with all the all their equipment. Uh, these I don't know what they are. They might these might actually be pieces to the Hanamog, so I won't really officially know until I can get to that. But the soldiers are very detailed. Uh, this would be my first time trying to do actually fi uh, human figures, so this will be pretty interesting to do. Um, so I mean, you got the Mausers. Uh, I used to have a Mauser actually. I wish I had my Mauser still. Uh, the uh, M uh, uh, forgot what those are called. I think they were MP9s, uh, MG42. So and then you know their helmets, their little packs, uh, the water. Uh, this was um, uh, gas masks. These were your, these were their gas masks. Uh, then we have uh, their knives. And their little, can, uh, I, think, I think they carried their grenades in those. So either they carried their grenades in those little packs or those were their uh, water canteens. I don't, I'm trying to remember the German military. Uh, I'm a big history buff and I can't even remember anything about what the German army did. And that was my main, uh, my main subjects in uh, actually, uh, in history was I was always doing stuff about the German military so but the figures figure sprues very nice I like I like how the the, the soldiers are detailed and everything so it, it looks like it, it's gonna be fun to do this so uh, last but not least uh, obviously I, I already went over the decals uh, they're nice they're thin they're not really that thick they don't feel like that thick but there's the German African core so that's what I'm gonna end up doing and then obviously we all know, you know. And then so we're gonna figure out what we can do for that. And then uh, from what uh, I was always told that uh, you know these are rubber band rubber band tracks. They you know they're, they're really good. Uh, some are really good, but a lot of guys like the Lincoln Link tracks. Uh, I'm gonna try the rubber band tracks and see how they go. And then when I get a kit that actually has Lincoln Links, we'll see which ones I decide to do. But the rubber band ones look like they they would be very simple to build. Uh, it's it's just one piece. Just one piece looks like it goes together, and then you glue it, and then you wrap it around. The drives, you know, you wrap it around the drive sprockets and and the road wheels, and then uh, from what I've learned 
uh, there's a way that you could put some glue on this and kind of like make them sag a little bit like they're supposed to so we'll see we'll see how that works out but yeah that's uh that's my inbox review for the <coughs> 135th scale german hanamog half track uh i would say i'd give it a four out of five i mean but i won't really officially know if that's a four out of five or it'll be a five out of five because I haven't built the armor yet, so and I'm hoping that I can. Right now, I just uh, I'm posting pictures on Instagram of the uh, of my status uh, or my updates on my F15C. So we'll see how that plays out. But hey, guys, uh, I'm going to sign off now for making this video, and uh, it'd be it's glad to hear from everyone. Uh, hopefully, a lot of guys subscribe to me and watch all my crazy adventures. See you later. Bye.